By the way, Mr. Young, you got a I did. All right. Systems with three variables. We're going to be doing the same stuff we were doing before. We're just going to add another equation and another variable. Okay? So basically, you already know how to do it. We're just going to add more. You know what I mean? I love what? I don't remember me. I hit the dot with Yes. Why are we doing this? Because the plan are we having? We're ever going to use it. Like, I can see, like, I'm not. It's going to teach you, though, how to think. Okay, I'm recording. All right, three equations, three unknowns. You are going to get an ordered triple when you get an answer for three equations, three unknowns. You're going to have an X and a Y and a Z. Now, this is very hard to see for students, okay? So this is the best that I can do for today. I don't know how to... You see this? This is an X, Y plane, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is two-dimensional. I go over X, up Y. If I flatten this and make X come stick out at you, okay? Right now, X is sticking out at you. Y is going here, okay? And I put a pencil through the, the origin. There's my X, my Y, and my Z. Okay. So basically, I flattened X and Y, and I made it three-dimensional. So now if I plotted the point... Let's see, we plot a point here. It's 3, 7, 8. If, if I, that's how we would do it on a graph, a two-dimensional graph. On three-dimensional, I would go X, I would go out 3, 1, 2, 3. I would go over to the left, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, or the right, your right, my left. 7, and up 8, and the point would be like right here. Do you see that? It's three-dimensional. That's the intersection point that, that we're looking for with three equations and three variables. Okay? Am I going to make you graph that? No, because I think it's Terrible. You don't need to draw the pictures. Just draw the writing. Just, okay. just, 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 just draw, the, <laughs> draw the, write the writing. Is there any way that you would ever be able to make like um, a three-dimensional graph with a symmetric like, paper or something? Like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You do not need to draw that. That was my Mrs. Yoder's attempt to draw a three dimensional. I don't I don't I like trying to draw it. It was Mrs. Yoder. And there's the point three seven eight. Where is the wait? So the x axis is right here. Okay? It's flat, meaning it goes backward down here. It's hard to see. Don't you don't see it, that's okay. Let's do the equations. Three equations, three variables. Okay, three equations, three variables. We're going to use the same steps, it's just more of them. That makes sense. I'm going to find least common multiple for my x's, least common multiple for my y's, least common multiple for my z's. X's, 2, 1, and 4. What's the least common multiple of 2, 1, and 4? 4. 4. Okay, plus or minus 4, multiples. We don't want what they divide into, 4. So I have plus or minus 4. My y's, one, negative 1, 3, and 1. These common multiple, plus or minus 3. My z's, 1, negative 1, and negative 1. Plus or minus 1. So when I will go to eliminate, when I go to eliminate, which one would you choose to eliminate? X, Y, Z. Z. Z's. I would choose the Z's because I would rather have ones than threes and fours. So I'm going to choose the Z's. Now when you choose them, make sure you write down what you're choosing or you can circle it or whatever. Don't forget you are eliminating these. I'm going to start by choosing any two equations that I want. Which two would you like to choose? First and second. First and second because I have a positive one z and a negative one. Once I add them together, they're going to cancel each other out. That's what I want. So I'm going to have 2x minus y plus z equals 4. That's equation 1. I'm going to write down. I use equation 1. Now I'm going to use equation 2. x 
plus 3y minus z equals 11. And I'm going to add them so that I can eliminate the z's. 15 and 2y. Yes. Do you only have a sharpie? I think I have a pen that I found on the floor. Ready? Don't want to poke your eye out. Here we go. Awesome. Okay. So now we only have two variables and one equation. I need another equation. So we have to get another equation. By doing that, I have to go back up to my three equations and I have to choose the unpicked equation. Which equation have I not picked yet? Three. 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 So you have to choose your unpicked equation. So that would be three. And then any other equation that you choose. Which equation would you choose to go with three? One. I would choose one. Why would I choose one? Because it's positive and negative, and I, can, I don't have to do anything, and they eliminate each other. Okay? So I'm going to choose 1. So I have 2x minus y plus z equals 4. Then I have 4x plus y minus z equals 14. Add them together. Do we just eliminate these? We, we, we have to eliminate another z. Because right now we have one equation with two variables. We need another equation with two variables, the same variables. And then once we have that, we can go another step. All right. So now I'm going to add. I have six x's. My y's are going to cancel. My z's are going to cancel. Equals 18. So that one worked out really nice. Yeah, we just solved Yeah, we just solved x and we have x. That doesn't always happen, and I'll, we'll do another example where that doesn't happen. So divide by 6, and x is going to give me 3. Take your x. How would I find y? Plug, plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in to this equation for x, and then solve for y. So I have 3 times 3 plus 2y equals 15. 9 plus 2y equals 15 minus 9 divided by 2. What is y equal? 3. Then you make any equation. After I find y and I have x, how can I find z? Pick any uh -huh. equation up at the top and plug in your x, plug in your y, and then solve for z. So which equation would you choose? Two? Okay. X plus three y X plus three y minus z equals eleven. So x is three. And y is 3. So what's my point of intersection? My I need my ordered triple. Three, Not three, 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 one. three, one. X, Y, Z. Oh, this is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but is it that difficult? No. no. What's that? Oh yeah, I can scroll up. It's just adding like kind of like one more step to what we already don't want. <laughs> okay. Now let's do another one. We have to find first the least common multiples. Least common multiples on my x's. Do we have to write all these down if we just write one down? No. Do you want to write them all down? Well, yeah. So my x's is going to be plus or minus 2. My y's 
Plus or minus 2? Minus these. Plus or minus 6. I will. I'll slow down a little bit. Okay. Which one would you choose? X is Y or Z? Y? I would probably pick the X's and I'll tell you why. If I choose the Y's, I have two. One's positive and one's negative, or one, they're both positive, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So look what you have with X. If I choose one and three, they're already one positive, one's negative. You can choose Y, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll pick the Y's because that's what you guys would have chosen, and we'll see what you run into. So we're going to eliminate Y's. Oh, choose X. <laughs> you chose the X, and you can go ahead and do the X, and see if you come up with the same thing. Right. Eliminate Y. So I'm going to take equation 1 and 2, and I have X plus Y plus 2Z, that's 2Y, that's 4, equals 3, and 2X plus Y plus 3Z equals 7. Now, I have a problem because both of the y's are, are positive. How do I make one of the y's negative? I'll realize you can use the substitution. How, would I, how do I change the y to a negative? Taylor? Multiply by negative 1. Can we use this to observe one of the y's negative? You could. Then you have to multiply the top one by 2. You see that? Okay, so when you eliminate the y's, that means you're doing them like last or what? No, or we're, we want b and c to equal plus or minus 1. I'm eliminating them, meaning I have to multiply this by negative 1, and I get negative x minus y minus 2z equals negative 3. Well, that's what happens. That's what I mean by eliminating the x's. What is 1x minus x? x minus x. No, no. They eliminate. That's what I mean by eliminate y. I want to get rid of the y. 2x minus x, just x plus z equals x plus z equals 4. How do I know what equations to use over here? What do I have to use? I have to use equation 3, the unpicked equation. Now, looking at equation 3, what other equation would you choose? 1 or 2? Two? 2? It doesn't really matter. They're both y's. So yeah, you can choose 2. Remember, when you do equation 3 and 2, you have to eliminate the y's still. You can't switch to x's. That's not okay. So I'm going to go negative x minus 2y plus c equals 10. Ms. Dillon, are you with me? Oh, yep. That's what I thought. Good. Then I have 2x plus y plus 3z equals 7. Okay. Now, if I'm eliminating y's, what do I have to get them to equal? Plus or minus 2, right? Yeah. What do I have to do with the bottom equation? Times by 2. Multiply it by 2. Okay. So I have 4x plus 2y plus 6z equals 14. And I'm going to just rewrite my other equation. Negative x minus 2y plus z equals 10. Now I'm going to add them. Minus x? 2y minus 2y? Cancels. 6z plus z? Now, here's why I had to eliminate the y's and I couldn't switch to x. Because now look, I have two equations in the same variables. Do you see how they're the same? Yeah. So now I just have to. Eliminate or do the same thing we've been doing in the past. So I'm going to take those two. I have x plus z equals 4 and 
3x plus 7z equals 24. Now, you, once you get to this point, you can use any method you want. You can use substitution, elimination, or Kramer's rule. I would use Kramer's rule because you, all you have to do is Kramer's rule and it gives you an x and a y. Okay, so I'm going to use Kramer's rule. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You can use elimination, you can use substitution, you can use Kramer's. So if I use Kramer's rule here, I need a d, I need a dx, and I need a dz. Remember, it's a dz, not a dy, because that's what I have left, z. Determinant is going to be 1, 3, and 1, 7. So I have 7 minus 3. Question. Yes. If you eliminated x's, would you do dy and dz? Then I have 424 and 17. So I have 28 minus 24. Which gives me 4. You just cross multiply. Then if I have DZ, I have 13 and 424. I have 24 minus 12. Twelve. How do I find x and z? Yep, dx over z. So I have dx over d, so 4 over 4. I don't know why, but I do know z is going to be 12 over 4. So I have 1, and I don't know why, but I know z is 3. Do you see how, how that was, to get two variables, that was very, I mean, not as much work that if I'd have to do elimination, then I have to plug and then find out y, find out z. I like Kramer's rule. I think it's shorter. Once you get to two equations and two variables. What do you do with the other variables? Okay, now, I know what x is, I know what z is, how do I find y? Yes, you go up to the original equations and plug it in. So I have x plus y plus 2z equals 3 x plus y plus 2z equals 3. I'm just using equation 1. I'm going to plug in x, plug in z. So I have 1 plus y plus 2 times 3 equals 3. And I'm just going to finish. So I have 7 plus y equals 3. Subtract 7. y is negative. So, what is my point of intersection? 1, negative 4, and 3. Yes? So, the entire thing is like the entire problem for substitution at the exact same time. Right, we're not going to do substitution until Thursday. Oh. We're using elimination today. You have to know how to do both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got confused because I tried to eliminate my x's. You messed up somewhere. No, like I tried to eliminate my x's and then I got lost in theology. I was trying to read this and I didn't feel like it. Well, let's do another one. Or that's the oh, same wait. one. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah. let's go back. Let's go back first. <coughs> What's the problem? Just go down. Last one. Alright, now I look at this and I think, okay, wait a minute, we have a problem. What's my problem? There's no z. Out of order. It's out of order. Do you oh. see that last equation? So you have to rewrite it and put it in order or else you will have problems. Okay, so if you don't want to write this down, you can actually rewrite it in order. You can write 2x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 1. Then I have x plus 5y equals 9. Now, what goes first is my x's. So I have negative 5x. Do I have any y's? No. So it's just plus 4z equals 4. There's your, th your three equations.
Now, these are nice, actually. They look confusing, but actually, they're half done for you. They're not as much work as the one we just did. Okay? They're half done for you. I have to choose two equations. Oh, first I need least common multiple. Which is the one for least common multiple of my x's? 2, plus or minus 2. My y's? Plus or minus 15. My z's? Plus or minus 4. Oh, wait, it should be 10. Sorry. My x should be 10. Thank you. I can see my negative 5 sticking out back down there. Okay, which would we choose? I would recommend choosing a z or a y because you already have an equation with the z or a y eliminated. So if you choose a z or a y, go z. All right, let's eliminate z. So we need to write down what we're eliminating so we don't forget. Which equations? I would choose, there's only two z's here, so I have to choose one and three. So I have 2x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 1. Then I have negative 5x plus 4z equals 4. In order to eliminate the z's, what do I have to do? Yeah, top, multiply the top, top one by two. So I'm going to get 4x plus 6y minus 4z equals negative two. Does it always have to be a first and third equation? No. Does not. You can pick any two you'd like. I'm eliminating z's, so the first and third are the only equations with z's in them. So I had to choose first and third. I can really like write the other oh, right. I don't need to. What? Oh, right. I don't need to. Okay, now we're going to add them. I have x, negative x, plus 6y equals, so this is going to cancel, 2. Now, what's nice about this is I don't have to do this again. I don't have to eliminate these again, because look, I already have another equation. My equation 2, the one I haven't used yet, doesn't have a z. So I can use that red arrow equation, equation 2, and the equation we just found. So I get to skip an entire section. Okay, so go ahead and write down equation 2 here, x plus 5, y equals 9. And look, the x's are going to eliminate right away. I don't even need to multiply anything. Cancel, 11y equals 11. Divide by 11. Y equals 1. So I have Y equal to 1. Can I find X? Yeah. Uh-huh. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Negative X plus 6 times 1 equals 2. I just use this equation right here. So I have negative X plus 6 equals 2 minus 6. So I have negative X equals negative 4 divided by negative 1 x equals 4. So I have y. I have x. Go back up to your original ones and find z. Now, one of my students said, well, you know y is 1. This is numbers. Can't you just use the second one and find... Or no, you can't. You can use x and find z. You don't have to use the first one. You can use the third equation. Yeah, the third equation. If x, we know x is 4, right? So if I have negative 20 plus 4z equals 4. So negative 5 times 4. Negative 5x plus 4z equals 4. Negative 5x plus 4z equals 4. If I plug in my x for 4, I can find z. So negative 5 times 4 plus 4z four equals 4. Negative 20 plus 4z equals 4. Add 20. 4z equals 
24, B equals 6. So what's my point of intersection? 4, 1, 6. 4, 1, 6. Very good one. There's your homework. It's only six problems. Now, I realize when I say six problems, that's a lot when you're doing elimination. Okay, especially with three equations, three variables. Hence, you have tonight, tomorrow night, and Wednesday night to work on that. You have three days to work on it. It is worth probably 15 to 20 points. So make sure you spend some time. You think you can do two problems a day and you'll be done. That's not bad. That's like 10 minutes a day. Okay? So if we don't do this, we'll be really frowned upon. Yes, you want to do this.